Hey guys, this is Mandeep, and it is uh, Wednesday, November the 25th, and uh, I'm going to do a short tutorial today and um, answer another question that is commonly asked, which is uh, how does one create a trading strategy and um, how does one test it? Now, uh, most of you use um, you know, some technical indicators uh, as part of your, your technical trading strategy. And um, by using this method, and I'll show that to you um, in, in a moment, how can you backtest that strategy and know how well it has performed um, on any particular stock over a given period of time on any given time frame, right? So the general sort of notion around creating an automated strategy is that it should work under various market conditions you know when the market is going sideways it should still be able to uh, you know find you some uh, good results during that time likewise uh, you know when the market is trending uh, on either side whether it's bullish or bearish you should be able to identify and find long and short term uh, and short trading um, opportunities Remember, the goal of the trading strategy is you have to make it consistent. And uh, before I go uh, and dive into this uh, further, let me point out this. What I'm going to show you today is just merely a framework of how to build a, a trading strategy. Uh, so by no means, uh, you know, this is complete or will be complete, right? Because this is just a beginning. Uh, and um, and I don't even know what kind of indicators you like. So you will take this as your framework and then incorporate your technical indicators and test it um, and see under what conditions it works, uh, you know, uh, properly for you. So in order to do that, um, uh, let's just go into the studies and uh, what we are going to do is uh, instead of uh, being in the studies tab we're going to be in the strategies tab right and we're going to create a new strategy here and uh, in order to use this there's a couple pieces of uh, code snippets that we need and I'm going to you know copy it right here so that uh, um, you know you can save this and use this uh, when you're ready so in this case uh, what it is saying is, uh, uh, you know, that in order to compute, right, what the backtest results look like, you need to have these, uh, you know, four lines of code where you're saying uh, this is your strategy uh, of buy to open. And when this condition, uh, which is equal to the buy sig is true, and I'll uh, walk that through in a moment what that means. And this is uh, an add order where, you know, you have an exit sig. In other words, you would close the um, you know, your trade, your long trade, uh, you know, once the exit criteria is met. And likewise, you can do um, a, a trade on the short side and then, you know, cover your short when it's appropriate, right? So what we'll do is, um, just for uh, illustration purposes, and since it's a tutorial and I don't want to take too much of your time, I'm not going to worry about the short side of the trade, right? So what we'll do is we'll just simply comment this line and uh, we'll comment this line as well. So this means that we're only worried about the buy side and the sell side. Now, as you can see, there, it says there's no such variable because we haven't really defined what our buy sig and exit sig is. So just for um, you know completing the code, just let's say plot and uh, we'll say buy sig, buy sig uh, equals zero for now. And then likewise, we'll say plot exit sig equals zero as well right so at least uh, at this point in time we have no errors in the code and let's just call it uh, tutorial underscore atlas and uh, we'll save it now what we really need to do is we at this point in time we need to define what a buy criteria is so again i'm just doing this for illustration purpose i'm just going to take some example and to be honest, I don't even know what the outcome is, whether this is a good strategy, bad strategy, etc. And that's not something that I'm worried about this is in this tutorial, because my goal is to just show you how to create one. And then, of course, you can spend the time uh, sort of creating it. So let's uh, I'll look for like maybe a scan that I have and maybe pick a criteria out of this. Right. So in this case, let's just pick a criteria where it says that the close is greater than Ichimoku span A and uh, the Ichimoku span B. So basically it's using um, a strategy where we're going to take a trade when the close is above the Ichimoku cloud. Okay, So I'm going to cancel this and then I'll go back into the 
chart again and then uh, let's just open this and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do define the buy sig and then I'm going to just paste that code here right so now you have this criteria defined but this, this is very minimal so what I have is I have a little um, you know piece of the code uh, example that uh, I'm going to just also cut and paste instead of like creating the whole thing and I'll show to you what that does okay so what that does is the following and uh, give me a moment as I paste it and then I'll explain it to you what it does so and condition and I'm going to paste this so essentially uh, what I'm saying is as an exa the example um, that we're currently building the close is greater than you know span a span b of the Ichimoku cloud in addition we are looking at multiple moving averages and we are saying the five period moving average is greater than eight right we're saying that uh, 10 is greater than 13 and 21 is greater than 50. Now this is just as I said an example and uh, now in, in case of our exit what we can do is we'll just you know since it's an example we'll take one of these and we'll say we'll close this trade when the nine period moving average right becomes uh, less than the 21 period moving average right so uh, let's just say uh, first of all we need to put a, uh, a, to, uh, a semicolon to complete the code okay so what we're going to say is that the nine period here right is less than the 21 period moving average right so that's that's pretty much it right so now um, this has created a simple sort of strategy for us right just by having this uh, piece of the code and then your definition of when you want the buy to be triggered now the reason um, I'm not going to get very specific um, into the um, buy criteria is because everybody uh, based on their risk profile has sort of different conditions when they would enter a trade right some people enter the trade uh, when uh, you know the stock has really fallen you know below a certain level um, and then that's when they want to trigger so it's like buy low sell high I am more in another camp where I buy high and try and sell even higher right because I just don't know when a stock has actually gone low how will it keep going f further or uh, is it going to turn around you know so I don't uh, you know I personally don't subscribe to that philosophy so I'll show you what I do um, and I'll just give you a little uh, sense of um, you know eventually what my strategy looks like that just as an example so that you know um, that you can uh, um, you know all strive to get there and, and maybe some of you already have something that works uh, better and so um, that's even even good and you know you should continue you know improving upon it so what we'll do is we'll just apply and hit the OK button right and let's apply the OK button and uh, interestingly you see that this is something where the buy signal got triggered now based on this strategy now if you entered the code at 129 and we're looking at the 10 minute chart 129 to 138 so this is a pretty nice trade that happened just in the day right now let's right click on this and that's what uh, is the part where the where the code we added makes it interesting right so you can see if you traded this strategy you, you know you had a loss of 445 640 to gain and this is all predicated on 100 shares right so you ended up making what 1584 dollars just sort of choosing this sort of strategy okay now this is again you know this is very basic and we can look at uh, you know other stocks like maybe uh, Amazon and stuff. And um, so this trade again was initiated. is not you know um, you know closed as yet. Show report right. So this one's pretty bad right. So as you can see, this profit loss and this is like uh, twenty eight thousand negative. If you traded this on a ten minute platform right. So this is not the kind of stuff that you want right. And again, as I already said that. The reason for this is because this is too simple, right? I mean, we built something very rudimentary as a, as an example, as a framework to learn about it. Now, what what if we were trading it on the day chart? Do we get any different results? So right click, right click and click on show report. And this did well, right? So like if you um, follow this strategy from 1231 to 1110, it generated a profit of like 56,000, right? Now, 
again, as I said, you know, since this is an example, you have to go through like multiple stocks and different time frames, right? If you're an intraday trader, you're probably looking at 10, 15, maybe even five, right? And then, you know, click on the show report and say, ah, it's negative 13,000. So this is really um, something that requires um, a lot more sophistication. In other words, you need to enhance this, right? And well, the advantage of uh, an approach like this is that uh, you're harnessing the computing power, right? And by doing that, you you can put a lot of checks and balances into place. Now, I'll tell you, this is not for everybody, right? A lot of people are very good at uh, sort of eyeballing the chart and, you know, putting the support line, the resistance line, um, and figuring out where to enter the trade, etc. right? I don't do that. Right. I trade 100 percent using um, uh, an automated strategy. Right. When when the uh, buy signal comes, I take it. When the close comes, I take it because for me, based on my risk profile um, and, uh, you know, what uh, uh, I like. Right. It works well. Right. Because usually I'm positive. Right. I'm net net positive at the end of the month. Now, of course, I've shown you here, you know, some examples where a few things are positive, a few things are negative. Now, what you really want is some a strategy which is pretty consistent, right? In most cases, 80, 90% of the cases, you should be winning irrespective of the time frame that you are on. That's a sign of a healthy sort of trading strategy, right? Because, you know, think of it today, right? Uh, uh, the bots that are trading, right? So people who've written these high frequency bots, right? Of course, they're trading on like pennies. But the, the reason it works is because they put in a gazillion checks and balances into the code, right? So they're looking at all sorts of, you know, moving averages. They're looking at pivot. They're looking at, you know, support points, right? They're looking at these trend lines and saying, okay, uh, where's the likelihood of, um, you know, uh, the sell to happen and these guys are for running it right i mean they're going to be uh, selling it you know before you get an opportunity so hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea on how to create this strategy right so now um uh, you know what you could do is uh, you know uh, uh, take this whatever right i mean you you uh, you can stop and pause uh, the video and just you know uh, Take a look at the code and copy it or create it. It's very simple. Um, and uh, the basic code uh, with regards to creating the buy order, sell order, I'll put it in the description so you have it, right? So now let's just, uh, I'm just going to get out of that. And let me uh, just like show you what I trade with. And uh, it's called uh, UTS I'm on version 10 right now. So let's add this and we'll just I'll just show you a couple uh, examples of, you know, uh, what, what sort of works well for me and uh, what I stick to, um, you know, on a, a daily sort of day-to-day uh, -day basis, right? How do I use this, right? So, again, I have a little bit more data, right? And once your strategy gets more sophisticated, uh, you can definitely add the uh, uh, you know, other pieces of the code that will help you, um, you know, determine or describe the statistics in more detail, right? So, of course, I can create uh, what is uh, <clears throat> a standard report just by right-clicking. So, I can right-click here and click on the show report. And this is 10-minute, um, 20 days of data. So, this is exactly one month, you know, this one average of 21 days. So, just, you know, uh, for uh, discussion purposes, this is one month of data, right? So, and this is trading on the 10 minute uh, time frame, right? So these are wins and losses. And so it does well, right? So it just generated 30 grand. Yeah. This is predicated on 100 shares. Now, if you do calls, then of course, you know, if you're doing a 50 delta, then you would have to buy two calls, right? Of uh, to, to make it closer to um, like uh, 100 shares, right? So again, so today there was like a trade generated uh, and it's timestamped, right, when you get a buy. So it's buy to open uh, at 31.60 at 6.50 a.m. This is specific standard time. And this closed the trade, right, at 31.72, right? So this was, um, you know, a profit of uh, 1,135. And then there was a second trade that closed at uh, uh, zero profit loss, right? So this was exactly even. And uh, the reason for that is, is in, in actuality, the trade wasn't closed. I just force the trade to close at the end of the day because I'm, you know, sometimes I don't like carrying uh, overnight risk, right? Because especially if there's a weekend or, hor um, or a holiday, then I don't know how the market is going to react. And especially with a stock like Amazon, um, 
Oftentimes it's risky, but in this case, um, I have a call and I was out into January, which I already shared um, uh, with the uh, with you guys on the board that I'm long. Okay, so so that's one example. So now you know we can look at um, other examples and see you know where buy sell came, and that's really the kind of thing that you want to get to, right? So uh, wh when is a buy? Uh, you know, uh, triggered. So in this case, here's a buy that triggered and there's another buy that triggered. So there were two trades on the 10 minute chart. So let's look at the report first and we'll see there were two trades. So this one, the first one uh, was buy to open, um, you know, at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, closed at 8.30. So closing an hour and a half for $300 because it's all predicated on 100 shares and we can adjust this right uh, to you know if you trade 500 or a thousand whatever the number is or 50 and the second one triggered again it's 1125 uh, it triggered by a thousand six and close a thousand nineteen right so in this case uh, as I, you know so you have to get the, like more consistent results right where uh, you're no matter what right you your net profit at the end of the month is positive. So that's like an ideal kind of strategy, right? So as you can see, uh, I don't pay a lot of attention to this win-loss ratio. So the win-loss ratio in this case is not bad. It's 67%, which is pretty good. But I can also show you that you can have a win-loss ratio one-to-one -one and still winning because that's not the um, key parameter. The key parameter always is how much do you win on an average and how much do you lose on an average. So for example, in, in our case, for Shaw, on an average, we're winning thousand bucks and we're losing roughly half when we lose a trade, which isn't good, which is not bad. Now, in most cases, uh, you know, we can sort of drill through a, a couple more examples and then I'll stop because uh, um, I know you would uh, rather prefer uh, spending time with your family on the holiday weekend. But anyway, just to point out, here's another example. So out of 25, we won 15 and lost 10, right? Again, the win-loss ratio is not bad here at 60%. You know, you won seven grand at the end of the month. Now let's look at um, the example of Netflix. And that's an example where the win-loss ratio is actually not very good, right? But you're still positive at the end of the month. And the reason you're positive at the end of the month is because you're on an average winning, you know, 234 and your average loss is 92. So in this case, you had 14 wins, 15 losses out of 29. But at the end of the month, you were fine. Now in most cases, um, you know, as I said, at least the way that, you know, my strategy got designed, uh, I'm net net you know, positive, right? It's very rare that, um, you know, uh, I'm actually uh, negative uh, trading a stock at the end of the month, right? So I have winning, you'll have winning and losing trades and that's just part of, you know, the, your, your trading philosophy, right? So in this case, now this is like a fantastic trade today that triggered first thing in the morning, right? And then closed at the end, right? So let's just right click and we'll see, we'll get a sense of the, you know, how much it generated, $1,900, right? 1970, almost 2K on 100 shares because it, you know, opened the trade at 283, closed at 303, right? And so again, so out of 21 trades, 29, you had 21 wins, eight losses in a month, which is pretty, pretty darn good. Now let's look at APPN, which was, you know, one of the best trades and full, full disclosure. I wasn't in that trade. I'm just, because uh, it's, like lots of stuff that's happening and sometimes you miss them. This also got hit right at the beginning, right? So it got hit at the beginning and closed at the end. Now this one, again, so out of 27, you got 16 wins, 11 losses. And what's really important is this. Yeah. On an average, you're winning $230, you're losing 70 bucks. And obviously, you know, there'll be some cases will be more or less. And so let's take a look at this one and you can see the buy to open happened at um, 6 40 a.m pacific standard time at 136 and it closed at 172. so the reason i prefer something like that and of course i have like a bunch of losses but i know at the end if i'm doing you know i uh, you know this kind of profit at the end of the month on one stock you know you pick four or five and you know you you you, you can be you can you can do quite well uh, using an automated strategy the reason i like using this is because this is so it's so fast right during the trading day right so much is happening and for me i'm typically in six to eight trades right and i'm the reason i can trade i'm take so many trades is because i'm not eyeballing during the daytime right because all i'm looking for is yeah did this happen yes take the trade right if it worked it worked if it didn't it didn't you know, just move on and just keep firing on the ones that, you know, I like. So hopefully this gives you a little sense of, 
you know how you can you know make your trading um, you know more sophisticated and um, i wish you the best and uh, happy holidays